Hello everyone, my name is Mehdi and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an in-context render in Keyshot. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some bad examples and some good examples. Uh, for example, here I have my um, Dremel render that I did a while ago. Um, it's on my Instagram page if you want to follow me. Uh, it's designed by Mehdi and as you can see, I did everything here uh, in Keyshot other than um, the little speckles and the little dusts. Um, but the rest of it was done in Keyshot, uh, such as the hand, obviously the model, uh, the environment, the wooden piece, the scratches, and everything else. Um, now, the reason I wanted to do this video is because I see a lot of renders like this one. Of course, this one is just a joke, uh, but you can also see like bad renders that was uh, done on a 2D background in Keyshot that the light doesn't quite match, um, the shadings don't match, uh, it's just, it's just missing a lot of details and uh, some people don't even bother to fix it in Photoshop and then they just submit their renders like that. Um, so this is, for example, one bad example uh, and this one, obviously this is a joke again, but there are people who would do that and it just does not make sense. It does not look realistic, nothing at all. And I'm going to be showing you some good examples here. Uh, this one... This one is a pretty good example, I think. Uh, he did not use um, the technique that I'm going to be teaching you guys today, um, but he just used the 2D background, uh, and then he, he put the phone on top of uh, the, the background, and he, he did the renderings, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, my friend here, Jacob, uh, has also done the same thing, and it looks pretty good. Uh, Tim, on the other hand here, uh, he I'm sure he used a, um, a 2D background, but he used a real... 3D modeled uh, cups and the drinks are the liquid inside of them and the table in Keyshot. So you can see the difference between uh, his rendering and for example Cadmill's rendering. Uh, this looks a little bit more realistic and I'm going to be teaching you how to make it more realistic like this one. So let's begin. So just to show you what I mean um, by that, um, I have two Keyshot files open uh, right now and this is one of them and as you can see I am uh, using a backplate image here and the, the environment is already locked. If I change the environment, I'll just go to another environment. Uh, but here my backplate image is this uh, picture of this young lady here. And uh, if I go to free camera and then move my camera, you can see that the model moves, uh, but the backplate image doesn't move. And if I want to use or if I want to render this image, then I have to go to Photoshop. I have to uh, fix some things such as uh, this this uh, strap, I have to erase it, um, I have to make some things more blurry, I have to maybe change the lighting, uh, I have to fix up a few things in saturation uh, and s stuff like that. Um, but that's going to take a, a while and it's really better to just do it in Keyshot if, if, if you can find the 3D model. Now what do I mean by that? I'm going to just pause that and I'm going to go to uh, this file here. Now this file is heavier, so it's going to take uh, longer to load. And as you can see, I do not have any backlight image. I'm actually, uh, I, I was actually using the models in uh, in the cloud library uh, of Keyshot. So if I go to free camera, I'm going to go to performance mode for now. And then uh, move around my camera here. You can see that everything here is, uh, is just models. They're 3D models. And I believe this is the... Uh, the more realistic version of rendering in context uh, pictures. And I see a lot of people make the mistake of just using a 2D background and then render it on there and then, you know, do not fix anything on, on Photoshop or just like fix uh, some slight things uh, that will just scream that, hey, this is not a real picture, this is a render. And it was done uh, by someone who didn't know how to uh, do their, you know, rendering job. Um, so I'm gonna be teaching you how to put these models here, where to find them, and everything else. So the first source that I want to show you, and I uh, I mentioned it before, is actually the cloud library. So if you just go to cloud library, uh, you can see a bunch of 3D models that you can use for free. Um, I, it's going to take a while to load. Okay, thank you, change log. You go to models, and then you can just look up whatever you need, and if you could find the uh, the uh, the model that you wanted, then perfect. Um, for example, here I used uh, that counter, uh, so I'm just gonna look up counter, 
or countertop. Uh, and this is this is what I use countertop with cabinets. And then uh, there is this mouse. There is this uh, countertop pack, uh, pastry stuff, uh, plastic jug, you know, laptop, and and everything else. Um, lollipops, lollipop. I don't know if I <laughs> I spelled that wrong. There we go. Lollipops. So if you're gonna say uh, render a kitchen thing or some food thingy, you can put these lollipops around uh, your food or like the plate that you're rendering to just make it look more interesting, make it more uh, realistic. Um, for example, you can download uh, fruit models from the Keyshot library. I believe they have a an Apple. Oh, there we go. An Apple 3D model. Uh, you can do this vintage speaker. You can do whatever you want, basically. And it's all for free. Um, and they add 3D models every once in a while to their library. So this is one resource. I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to go back to my uh, Chrome. Uh, there are also some websites, such as GrabCat. As you can see, GrabCat is mostly for engineers and industrial designers, so you, will, you won't be able to find organic looking stuff, uh, such as an Apple that I looked up. As you can see, uh, these are mostly Apple products, like the phone, like the laptop, the, the mouse and stuff, and then there's this uh, weird Apple model. I have no idea what it is, uh, but you can find uh, these models on, on on the GrabCAD library as well. Um, but you also don't want to download the, the, the Apple one. Anyways, uh, so if you want a technical product, uh, an actual product, such as a watch, a knife, uh, a car, you come to GrabCAD. But if you want more organic looking stuff, uh, like fruits, or humans, or animals, you have to go to these three websites that I'm going to show you. CG Trader is a uh, is like an everything website for 3D models. Uh, you can find a SOLIDWORKS models here, you can find Blender models here, uh, you can find a bunch of just different models here. I looked up Apple here and as you can see we have Apple products and also the actual Apple itself. Um, now if you uh, if you pay attention to the bottom of these models you can see a number that's the price of these models. You have to actually pay for um, these three websites for some of the models, not all of them. Uh, for example, we have Steve, jo uh, Steve Jobs here, and it's an STL, so it's 3D printed. But if you want to uh, download free 3D models, you just have to go and check this on. And then as you can see, we have uh, free apples and then free Apple products. Um, we go to Sketchfab. This is my preferred website. I looked up Apple. It's mostly uh, organic looking stuff. It was mostly done in Blender or 3ds Max. Uh, the less technical um, software, 3D modeling software, you have a uh, this a, a stop and uh, a stop motion animation of an Apple here. Um, you have the Apple Campus. You have an Apple Watch. Uh, you can find human models here. Uh, you can find computers here. Everything you want. And uh, this is also um, some of them are paid. Some of them are free. Uh, you can't unfortunately filter that, but you can filter uh, the downloadables from the non-downloadables. So if you just click here, downloadables, and go to, for example, this Apple, which I believe I downloaded before, uh, you can see that there's a, a download option here. Uh, you can download it. Some of them are in OBJ format, and some of them are in uh, .fbx format, and I'm going to be showing you how to actually import them into Keyshot. Uh, so you go to download 3D model, and then this one is uh, .obj object, and um, for example, I don't know, maybe this one is .fbx. Uh, this one is also obj, but you can also find .fbx uh, uh, format files. The next one, uh, which I do have an account here as well, and I am selling my uh, uh, my Dremel on this website, my Dremel uh, 3D model on this website, is uh, Turbo Squid. And uh, if you look up apples, you can find a lot of them. And most of these apples are actually... Uh, uh, you have to pay for them, but you can also change uh, the filters to free. Uh, so if you go to free, you can see that there are 99 free apples here. Uh, we have some Apple products and we have some uh, actual apples. Um, and you can just download them again. Some of these are OBJ, FBX, and other formats on this website. Uh, but 
my uh, Sketchfab is my favorite website for in-context renders, so I suggest you also use uh, Sketchfab, or you can use any of these um, four websites that you want. Those are the, the big ones. So here I've downloaded uh, three Apple files from Sketchfab, and I'm not sponsored by Sketchfab, uh, although that, that would be nice if I am sponsored by Sketchfab. Um, uh, but I want to show you how to unzip these files and you know just use them in your renders for free. Um, I already unzipped two of them, and the third one, it's as easy as unzipping anything, basically. You just right-click on it, and then uh, you, you just uh, do extract, extract to Apple. And if you don't have WinRAR, you can just do it uh, with your Windows. Um, and you go to the file that is uh, already extracted, and then you go to Source here, and you also extract this one. And when you extract it, you have a, uh, a texture here and an OBJ. I still don't know what MTL is, but I haven't used it. I never needed it. Uh, just use these two. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to use these th or the, the, the three kinds that you can download from the website um, on Keyshot. So here I have a Keyshot file, and you just drag and drop the OBJ or the FBX into your Keyshot scene. And uh, you, I think you have to, you, you just keep everything the way they are. And here we have an apple. As you can see, you <laughs> sometimes when you download uh, 3D models, they're not the best modeled 3D models. Um, so like this one is already chopped, and I believe it's a, it's a two-piece model. So if you we go to our scene, and then uh, yeah. So if I hide this one, I have this bottom, which is I don't know what it is, and then I just hide this one, and it's, it's actually empty on the inside. Um, so you would encounter some. Oh, that's cool. There is a big bug on my window on the outside, so <laughs> you would encounter uh, some bad 3D models like this one on the internet if you're downloading the free versions. Um, but you can also find some good ones, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, so if I go back to my apples, uh, go back to new folder and apple 2, this is another one. Again, I, I just extracted that one, and then this is... Uh, a dot obj again and I'm gonna just be dragging and dropping this here and it says cannot load texture blah blah uh, just, just just ignore whatever it says and we're just gonna move it here and as you can see this is this is dark it doesn't have any uh, any texture loaded with it and um, that's okay because uh, because the texture is already provided with the file that you downloaded basically um, so if you go back to your folder and uh, this one, the one that says uh, .jpg, it's a picture, you just drag and drop it to your Apple. There we go. And you change it to diffuse. And there we have it, you have the Apple. Sometimes these files uh, come with additional stuff such as this, this one. Uh, this is a UV map. Uh, you, you can use this for your bump map. Uh, for your bump map. So you just drag and drop this again. And then you put it, uh, if you put it on diffuse, it'll just turn purple. But if you put it on bump, then it will uh, it will find those bumps, and then you can just flip, uh, play with those bumps. You can increase them, decrease them, and it'll just make it more, it look more realistic. Um, and then that ne next one I want to show you is actually a .fbx file. And it's just that. Nothing else comes with it. Uh, and I already checked it. I think it looks pretty good import and as you can see some of these models are just way too tiny and this is or way too big actually this is too big um so you just have to resize them this is this was uh s scaled up by 10 so you just do you just change it to one and it's it's already big so you just you know just play with the size and then snap to ground and uh it's still big it's because uh, the other two are uh, are small and as you can see, I was uh, I was wrong. This wasn't a good one, um, but this one does not have any textures. Uh, it it doesn't have any bump maps. Uh, it's, it's it's just that. So uh, so if you want to download free free 3D models from uh, the internet, you're gonna have to deal with these problems. So out of three uh, Apple models that I have here, one of them was actually usable, and um, if you actually end up using them in your renders, it would make a, a world of difference in your renders. It will just make everything look better and just, uh, you know, make it look more realistic. 
Because if you're, say, rendering a fruit bowl here, and then you put uh, a bunch of fruits in it from the 3D models that you downloaded, then the light would be the same, the texture would be the same, the saturation would be the same, the shadows would be the same. You know, everything just matches together and it'll just look more realistic rather than uh, you take a 2D model of, uh, I don't know, uh, a 2D picture of apples or uh, bananas or oranges or something, and then you just like put them here on your background and then use that uh, as your rendering, uh, you know, thing. Um, that would just look not realistic. And uh, you have to take it into Photoshop and then you have to erase stuff, you have to fix stuff. It's just. It's just a headache. Uh, so if you use this this uh, method, it would make your renders look a lot better. And I can show you some um, some good examples that I did a while a while ago. This one, for example, I this is a 3D model that I found for free, and then behind her is actually a male 3D model. And then they both came with the right texture, with the right uh, bump, and everything. Um, the tables I downloaded from the Keyshot library, the plant, I, I think I also got that from the Keyshot library, the wall, again, Keyshot library, nothing here was actually done in Photoshop, and that actually makes it much so much more uh, realistic and easier, you know, to render. Uh, so this one uh, is another example, but I did this uh, blurry person walking here on Photoshop, um, and that's the only thing I did on Photoshop, and as you can see, I removed the female model that was sitting here and I just did the, you know, just the chair. Um, I did this a while ago, it's a knee brace looking thing and again nothing was done in Photoshop. I downloaded the shoes from Sketchfab or somewhere, uh, there's a back here and then a, a, a two benches here and a bunch of lockers around it just to make that shadow and then just to make it look more realistic. Um, this one also, I, I, I think I downloaded all these models or I didn't download them, they're already on, on, on Keyshot and I just put them there, I was just playing with the caustics. Um, so guys, please watch this video, it's a, it's a, I think it was a, uh, it's a great source for you guys to render more realistic renderings, pictures, photos, and uh, that is actually the end of the tutorial-ish video that I had for this week, and I wanted to do this video because I think it'll really uh, help you guys uh, make more realistic renderings. And please let me know if you have any questions. Um, just put them down in the comments. I will answer all the questions you have. And uh, best of luck, let me uh, let me know, or let me see some of the rendering that you did. You, you can just uh, send it to my Instagram uh, page. You, you can just uh, send a direct message to my Instagram account, and uh, I can share it on my Instagram page. Um, the, the good ones, of course, the, the good examples. And that's all. Thank you, and I will see you next week.